Hi, it's Terry with Cover Chipboard. I'm back with the haunted house and we're finishing the outside. When we last left off, we had added all of our siding um, and I chose to use the corrugated cord cardboard from Cricut for the siding and it turned out perfect. I love the way it looks. Um, I did want to mention, don't worry if they don't meet up exactly, those are gonna be covered with trim. Uh, so I'm using several different paints. I've listed the colors in the um, blog post, but I've got a, uh, a dark gray, a medium gray, and a mossy green. And then I might be using some black and white as well. Um, I'll just have to see as I go. But to get started, just use the darkest gray, paint the whole entire base, and you want to make sure you get up here real good. And if you hit the white, don't worry about it right there because it's going to be covered with trim. Same thing anywhere where the white is at near the top or bottom. If you hit it a little bit like I have, don't worry about it. It's either going to be covered with trim or you're not going to tell when we get done painting. Uh, do the roof completely. I know we're going to cover the roof, but this will just help give it some more sturdiness to it. And I still have not done anything with my back yet. But when you paint the roof, make sure you paint the underside of the overhang because some of that will show. So you don't want to leave raw chipboard there. If uh, While we're painting this, this technique is why I'm doing the video now to show you how to paint and age. We're just going to age this. If you happen to get some on your window, don't freak out about it. Just leave it. You can, um, when you're done, you'll be able to either scrape it away with your finger or use a little exacto knife to scrape it off. So, you know, try your best not to get a bunch on there, but if you get some, don't worry about it. Also, when you cut the siding, you had these pieces that were cut out will make perfect shutters if you want to put shutters on your house. All you're going to do is cut it right down the center, and then you'll attach it one piece there and the other piece here. Um, I did not make pieces for like a, a ledge, but I don't think you're going to need those. Um, but we'll see. If it looks like we need them, we can always come back and add a little piece of trim underneath. Um, if you do use shutters, I'm not sure. Definitely wouldn't use them down here. I'm not sure about these, so we'll just go and look at it when we're done and see. We may just use some, and since it's a haunted house and it's old and decrepit, you might have some shingles hanging off part way. So we'll just see how that goes, and again, that's your discretion. But if you use the shutters, you'll want to paint them also this darkest gray color. So, But we'll get that to that later on. Right now, I want to show you this technique. And I'm going to use the, the medium gray first. And you need to have paper towel. And I'm just going to use out of the lid for right now. I don't have a really stiff brush. Uh, a, the stiffer brush, the better. And what you want to do is dip your brush in the paint. And then take your paper towel and you're going to wipe off the excess. Because you don't want very much paint left on your paintbrush. And because this is rigid, you're going to work this way down the house. And you just want to keep doing that until you get a pretty good bit of distressing on it. You're just trying to get what might look like dirt. And if you want to fill in some areas like that, you can. And if you get some up in there, don't worry about it. Again, that's going to be covered with trim. You don't have to get all the way up in that corners. I think I'm going back to this other brush. I think it's easier to work with and it'll cover more. 
Now typically it's going to be dirtier down near the bottom. So you might want to put a little extra down here at the bottom. And on around the edge it might be a little dirtier. So I'm going to do a little bit extra on the edge. So just play with it until you get it like you like it. And once you get one side done, go on to the next. And so then, once you've got that done, you want to go back to your darker gray with a different brush. And you want to make sure there's not too much paint on your darker brush. And then you want to do just a few little places like this. So you've got some dark in there. It takes very, very little of this dark. You don't want to use a lot of water, but if you get to a part where it's kind of... Uh, Where it looks like too many too many lines are there you can use some water to kind of brush it out some and make it softer harsh there. And you just basically, you're just going to keep playing with it until you get it where you like it. Until it looks really old. Again, be careful with your water because if you get too much, it's going to make your paper kind of tend to shrink up. Whoops. You could also wet a paper towel and do this. And if you get too heavy of an area that you don't like, you can always come back with the lighter gray on top of it. down here. And smooth it out.
and that's it. That's how you would paint it. So you'll need to do this on all sides. And then once we get done doing that, then we're going to attach our windows and um, our windows and the trim. And then the very last thing we'll do is the porch. And once we get the porch done, then we'll go up to the roof and start working on adding your shingles and the railings. So I'm going to stop the video. I'm going to finish mine up, and then I'll be back with another video when I get to... Um, Actually, I don't know if I'll do another video or not to finish it up. Um, we'll have to see how that goes. All right. Thanks. See you again soon.